Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and co-analyst, Dave Vellante. Let's talk data lakes. Let's talk some data yeah, lakes. Data lakes, data movement, uh, kind of a play on Einstein. Um, move as much data as you have to, but no more. Right, but you still got to move data. That's right, <laughs> we still got to move it. So with that, I'd like to introduce our next two guests. We have Taylor Brown, he is the co-founder and COO of Fivetran. Welcome back to theCUBE, Taylor. Excited to be here, thanks for having me. And Chris Suen, he is the head of data at Lyra Health. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, Chris. Thanks for having me. So I want to have you both start out by talking a little bit about, about your roles, but I'm going to start with you, Taylor. Why did you start Fivetran? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, when we founded Fivetran almost 12 years ago, uh, there was a need to get data into cl uh, modern cloud data, data warehouses uh, like Snowflake. And, uh, and you know, I think the, the landscape had changed with the advent of the cloud data warehouse and now the way in which customers wanted to move data, they wanted to move all their data, they wanted to do it in a fast, reliable, secure, and sort of uh, bulk fashion, in other words, uh, let's take everything we have and let's get it into your cloud data platform like Snowflake, and that's what we built. Well, and you did it with a friend. Just you, you right. George, your buddies, so congratulations. Okay. That is an awesome story. <laughs> Love yeah. to see it as a, yeah. a co-founder with a friend with similar aspirations, but we haven't, haven't quite hit your level yet, but yeah. love to see it, man. George, so. Yeah, George and I have known each other our entire lives. In fact, our, gr our great-great-grandparents knew each other. It was like these long-standing family relationship. Uh, which you know, has worked out very well for us in Amazing. this business. Indeed. Chris, let, tell us a little bit about Lyra Health. Yeah, sure. Uh, so Lyra is a leading provider for uh, mental health benefits. Uh, we serve millions of customers, uh, clients, and uh, we, we have a platform that gives them access to quality mental health care. Uh, you can book a therapist or a coach within minutes and uh, you know, we use AI matching, we use a, sort of a customized support model, uh, and we value our evidence-based care to provide the best mental health care for our people. So. I, I love these types of interviews. Yeah. We have a technologist, a, a founder. Um, I want to understand the trends that you guys see, and let's call it the data lake trends, we can call that. But then there's hard news, we want to get into yeah. the hard news, but yeah. then get the customer perspective on what it is actually you want, and try to align those two you know, pieces. So, uh, what are you guys seeing in terms of the big data lake trends from, from the technology company side? Certainly, so I think there's a couple of different trends that are, that are weaving together right now. The first one I would say is around, is around AI, the second one is around data lakes and they're certainly connected. So everyone's talking about AI and, you know, and I think we, we really want to understand like, okay, well, what are customers doing with AI? Why are they working with AI and ML? And so we spent a bunch of time, uh, we partnered with MIT to Talk to, speak to a bunch of our own uh, CIOs, CDOs, and, and leaders in data, as well as a bunch of other just industry leaders in data. And what we found was that 80% of them said AI is their, their top most important priority right now. And, and then 60% said that moving data was, and data infrastructure for AI was the hardest challenge that they were f actually facing. Right. And, then, and so you have that, and on the other side you have the, the, the data lakes, which are a key component for, for building on top for AI. Right? And I think that's where all this pressure is coming from for, to Snowflake and, and for us, where our customers are saying, hey, we really want to load data into Iceberg, we really want to load data into our data lake, and then we want to query it within Snowflake or other cloud you know, data platforms. Uh, and so this was like a push for us over the last year or more, like Lyra Health, and so we spent a lot of time uh, you know, focusing on that and, and, we, and we've launched a product this week around it, which I can talk about now or we can talk about later. Well, so I want to ask Chris, from your perspective, what are the drivers in your business that are informing your data strategy and, and give us the, the trend uh, answer from, your, from the customer perspective? Yeah, I think like traditionally you had to load your data directly into a Snowflake or a Databricks. I think this opens up that ability to have the ownership back to the customer. You know, you have your own space that's private, that's you know, you're in your VPC, that you're comfortable with loading all the data you have there, and then selectively what you want to pull into your data warehouse or into your AI platform, and you have a wealth of tools to access that data. So that's the biggest draw for us, is just like that ownership and keeping that data private within our own world. It's interesting, two years ago at uh, Snowflake Summit, Benoit Dajaville asked in the audience, How, who, who here has heard of Iceberg? <laughs> and like a five or six hands went up, and I had certainly heard of it, but I wasn't deep into it, but, sure. but now it's like 100% of the audience was it. So, but it was the, the allure of, of an open table format, 
And, and we think about bringing any compute engine to yeah. that data, you know, whether it's right. you know, Snowflake or yeah. Trino or Starburst or Correct. Amazon, whatever, gives you that flexibility. Yeah. Why is that important to you? It's important because uh, you want your data in one place and you don't want to have limits on how that scales. Uh, and then having that in cloud storage allows that diversity of data to be in one place. And then you can selectively pull what you need for AI. Uh, it, it's a great place for unstructured data and that's what AI needs actually, uh, that it loves unstructured data. So uh, just having it in one place uh, is really important. And also privacy, I think. Uh, we don't want to load private you know, PI information into our warehouse to you know, limit exposure, so we have that in our private network, and that's really uh, helpful for like a health tech company. All right, Taylor, I, I wonder if you could pick it up from there, yeah. and let's get into the news uh, Yeah, so, well. so, so to, uh, this week we launched uh, the Fivetran Managed uh, Data Lake service, and what that is is basically taking data from, you know, so, so like this, taking a step back. Fivetran is the global leader in data movement. And we move data from over 500 different data sources for our customers like Salesforce, like Marketo, like SAP, like Oracle, uh, into a cloud data platform for our customers in a very automated, secure, and reliable way. And our customers then have been asking, hey, hey I'd really like this to be loaded into a data lake. And so we now support loading it into Iceberg or into Delta. And the, the big difference is that we actually manage it all the way through. So we're updating those tables in Iceberg. So effectively you get the sort of storage layer of a data warehouse uh, within your own uh, environment, your own, you know, cloud your, cl your own cloud storage, uh, but all managed by Fivetran. Uh, and, and so I think when you think about you know, the last 15 years in data warehousing, you know, Snowflake really was the pioneer in separation of compute and storage. And so they, you know, they had this great compute engine sitting on top of S3. I think what the open like, file formats like Iceberg allow is for that you know, separation to go even further, where customers say, I want to own the storage layer, and I want you know, the compute engine to sit, sit separately from that. Uh, and you still get all the benefits of, of, you know, of basically of Snowflake, but the customers get the benefits of having the storage within their own layer. And so, I actually think Snowflake thought this out pretty well, because it was always criticized that being closed, that it's embracing open. Yeah. But, but let's help people understand uh, what they're doing, and then I would love to get your reaction as the customer. So basically they're saying we're going to open source Polaris, which is the technical metadata catalog. Right. And then we're going to compete on the basis of the, the excellence of our compute engine. Correct. So bring it on. Which I think is clever. I mean, if, if yeah, you got a good yeah, yeah. forehand I, in tennis, use it. Yeah. Right? I, well, and this, yeah. I mean, this is ultimately what a lot of customers want. There are, there are a lot of customers who, you know, they have their own data lakes, they're moving a ton of data into it, and then taking all that data and putting it into your data warehouse in another S3 bucket that's not managed by you, then you're paying twice for the storage of that. It just doesn't make sense when you're at very large scale. So the largest organizations on the planet say, we have to own this. And I think what it will unlock for Snowflake as they're supporting this more and more is that they're going to get more and more uh, uh, workloads to, to, to drive against the Snowflake instances. So are you all in on Iceberg or what's the mix? I'm all in, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, you know, it's something we don't have to think about anymore as storage, actually. And it's a race, I, we love the race as a customer because it gives us more features. Uh, Snowflake and other competitors, they're going to build next level features for like making AI easier, for example. Uh, so, you know, we love those features and want to focus on like what the compute can do for us and the features that come with it, yeah. So what's your strategy in terms of governing the data that's in Iceberg? Yeah, and, and it powers a lot of like different vendors out too, like we have data catalog vendors that are popping up. Uh, Snowflake itself is, you know, getting into data cataloging. So we're looking at those platforms to help, you know, with security and governance and documentation. Uh, but yeah, it's all coming together and it's like a really great ecosystem for So you customers. haven't decided yet, is that right? We're you're not, still, we're in the You're still process. researching. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're doing some POCs, oh, yeah. <laughs> on what basis, uh, I mean, I guess it's kind of all these same things, but I'd love to ask you, what basis are you going to make that decision? Obviously there's, there's a cost factor, but there's also an effectiveness, and how are you going to evaluate that decision? Yeah, I think the biggest one is, you know, data means something in terms of what engineers think of it. 
but I think translating to the business of like what data means, that's the biggest draw for a catalog and how to utilize the data. So for us, it's like what's, what's the business take on that platform and how to read that data, and if they understand it throughout the organization. And so that's so your right. options are, there's a lot of catalogs yeah. that are emerging. You've got yeah. Polaris just you know, announced open source. Right. Uh, you've, you've got Horizon, which is the, yeah. the governance you know, piece of that. Uh, you've got some other third-party catalogs, so you'll, you'll be evaluating those, and then you'll standardize on one, is that correct? Correct, we'll try. Uh, we, we're not sure if we'll get there, but that's my goal, is to standardize on one, where you have one place where you search universally all your data with all your metrics, and you get back what's relevant. Okay, so standardizing yeah. on one just yeah. simplifies your life dramatically. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't get there, it's because why? Is there certain best-of-breed capabilities that you want to have access to? that it, you're going to try to preserve. Yeah, it's possible. I think it's mostly due to how you segment like the profile of who's accessing the data. You know, you're an executive, you want to see a data in a certain way. You're an engineer, you're going to see a, the data in a different way as well. Uh, data is universal, but there's only relevant things that you care about from your role. I think that's going to be the key driver. So Lear is a perfect uh, customer for you. Of course, that's yes. probably why you're here. <laughs> but, but because they're saying, move our data into Iceberg, and then, yep. you know, then it's our data. Yeah. You know, we're not going to, like you said, PII, we don't want to put PII into no. the, to the data warehouse. Exactly. And, and that'll make your lawyers and your compliance people happy. <laughs> but that, yeah. That's like the, 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 the ideal customer profile here. The ideal it? customer profile. And, and you know, like, I mean, so we have, we've been partners with Snowflake since 2015, almost nine years now. Uh, and we have about, about a third of our, of Snowflake's customers use Fivetran. And a large percentage of them are asking, have been asking for this. Uh, and we already have over you know, 500 customers who have, who have used or are using the product today. Uh, and, and that just shows the excitement for this that we haven't even launched this product yet. Uh, and so you know, they were early users of it and you know, certainly they're, they're, they're helping us make sure we're building the right pieces because there's still some things to figure out. Like, like you know, how's the catalog work? How do we integrate with the catalog? Like I think Polaris is a fantastic move for both Snowflake and for the industry. I think keeping, you know, making it an open format actually uh, in many ways will help the larger customers want to adopt that versus something else that is potentially a closed uh, catalog. Because at the end of the day, like moving the data and storing the data, you know, we can do that and that, that's like fantastic. But I think the, the thing that, you know, that the, the customers are really battling over or will be thinking about is just like, who's going to own the catalog? And is that open or is it not open? Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in everyone's decisions over the next like year or two. And there are other data formats as well that you have to deal with. It's not just Iceberg, right? I mean, exactly. Iceberg is more structured, right? Right, and so, exactly, yeah. yeah. You've so, got the unstructured data, so semi-structured data, so you've yeah, got- that's where the data catalog's really important. It kind of masks all that complexity down on, on below and then elevates it to like the business level definition. And it doesn't matter if like the table is in whatever format, like at the end of the day, like the business users care about the metric. Where does the data come from? What does it mean? So. So Chris, you, you've talked about what the benefits of this extended support of data lakes means for you as a customer, but what does it mean for the customers of Lyra Health? How, how do they feel a difference in terms of their ease of use of your product? Yeah, I think it opens the doors up for like more insights and recommendations, like having our data in one place uh, at scale, you know, where we don't have to like think about limits of where it is in Snowflake, uh, having all in one place, I think opens up like the ability to make our care better. You know, we, we really care about the outcomes of our patients and having more of that data in, insights uh, come from that data lake, uh, it's going to be really valuable for us. So we're looking forward to loading more data in uh, to see what we can do with it. Uh, and yeah, I think that's, that's the positives for us. Yeah. The thing I might add, and maybe you can you know, speak to this or not, is you know, I think in terms of the other, the, the AI piece, which I touched on earlier, I, I think a lot of, you know, we're, if we look like 15, 20 years ago at BI, it, you know, it looked very much like, hey, we've got a bunch of disparate data, we're going to move a bunch of spreadsheets around, and we're going to try and like, collate this into like, you know, some sort of report. And it was a mess. And I think then, you know, there's a lot of infrastructure that's been built around this. I think there's this big wave in you know, 2015, 2016 with, with Snowflake hitting the market. And, and then like, you know, now Fivetran has you know, built this infrastructure for BI over the last nine years, and that works ex extraordinarily well. And the same thing is sort of happening with AI. I think a lot of customers are like, I need to do AI, and I'm going to like get data from here and there, here and here, and and, and so I, I, you know, what, what Fivetran is committed to is is now building the infrastructure for AI for our customers. And oh, by the way, it, it's it generally ends up being very similar, right? Like, you you have to like get easy and reliable access to a lot of data put into a central place, and then you have to build a model on top of that. 
It's like very similar to VI in some ways, and, and I think that's what you know, like folks like you are doing, and I think putting it into a data lake gives you more advantage of actually using that and getting some of the unstructured data in there as well, and joining those all together to build a really great experience for your customers. Right. Yeah. So explain the, the value that you want to get from Fivetran in the context of, of AI specifically. Yeah, I think, uh, well there's a couple value adds. Uh, naturally, Fivetran makes it easy to ingest data from various systems. Uh, I love that you support Salesforce, NetSuite, all business systems, product data, various sources. Uh, so getting that into the, the lake house or the, the, is actually very, very easy for us to uh, ingest. And I think the bit value add is our data engineers don't have to manage that anymore. Before we had to selectively pull what is not PII into the warehouse. Now we don't have to do that. We can do auto schema detection and pull everything down into our private lake house. Then we, then we can selectively pull using DBT into Snowflake, uh, into Snowflake. So that's been the big value add. And then with that, you know, like we have the structured data in the lake house. Uh, we, we can use large language models to then process you know, what we want to get from, like, for example, customer feedback, sentiment, things like that. So that opens the doors up for a lot of that processing on the lake house itself. So yeah. you're pulling data from different operational yeah. systems and then you're, you're feeding your BI uh, systems. How do you ensure that all that data is harmonized, that you know, this metric means the same thing in all of the different you know, BI platforms? How, how do you yeah. deal with that, uh, that challenge? <laughs> That's a tough problem. Uh, I'm hoping the data catalog would solve that. Uh, at least partially. Um, you know, for example, you have a book of business metrics that you load in your data catalog, where the entire company has visibility, and you know where that data comes from, and everybody's talking in the same language of data in a business term. So, you know, that's my hope with the so data catalog. So, the, the lineage yeah. piece exactly. can at least give you visibility right. that you could get agreement, and there's there's probably some other technology. So, well, that and, and like, you know, Fivetran, we we move all the data and we move it, you know, in a structured way. It's standard schemas, so they know exactly what they're going to get. But then we also provide all the lineage data as well, so they can take that and put it into, you know, their like, you know, whatever you, tool you decide to use for exactly. your catalog. Yep. And then you have a clear understanding of not only like what's there, you have a clear understanding of where it came from. Yeah. Okay, so you solve the lineage problem in part. Well, I would, I would, in part, we, we, we deliver lineage data for all the data that we deliver, which makes it very easy for, you know, if you use Fivechain, like a lot of our customers do, for all of their data movement, like we are a platform for you to, for every customer to use across the organization, then they, ha then they have all the lineage all the way back to whatever source it is. So say it comes from Salesforce, we can tell you, hey, this row came from Salesforce, came from this API endpoint, on this day it was updated. And then he knows, like, okay, that was updated in this time, in this row, in this date, and like knows all that information. And that feed, can feed the catalog. Exactly. And, and, right. and, okay, got it. Taylor, we have a lot of tech founders on theCUBE. Not many of them went to liberal arts colleges. I know you're a liberal arts, <laughs> yeah. you're a Lammers grad. Can you, it's graduation season. Give us the pitch for liberal arts college right. graduates going into technology. I love this one. I, I literally, I'm still, uh, so I went to Amherst College. I, I still spend a bunch of time trying to mentor uh, various young entrepreneurs from Amherst. You know, I think from liberal arts schools, especially East Coast ones, it's, it's pushed, folks are pushed right into the sciences or a lot of times legal or a lot of times finance. And I think entrepreneurship is a, is a really great path for folks. I think the reason that LibArts was such a great um, uh, sort of background for me to then be successful in technology is it's all about like learning and learning to love to learn and the fact that there's always going to be things changing and you have to learn, you have to like have really good first principles. Uh, and that's what I think you get. First principles, communication, like those two things are e extremely important. Uh, and I think those have played out very well in technology for me. Excellent, well pleasure having you both on theCUBE. Thank you both so much. Absolutely, thank Thanks, you guys. so much for thank having you us. So much, yeah. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.